Now I'd like to introduce Chaz Allen. Uh, Chaz is a senior project manager with SA Water and he's been involved in the Murray Bridge Wastewater Treatment Plant relocation project for at least the last five years. Over this period, there have been various stages of design development and procurement, uh, as well as consultation. Um, and now, pleasingly, we are progressing through the construction phase, uh, and that's what we'll learn a bit more about today. Chaz brings a patient, consultative, and conscientious approach to his management style, and we look forward to learning a little more about the journey through this project. Thanks, Chaz. Thanks, Phil. And good morning, everyone. Um, I don't know if I've ever been introduced as a patient um, before, but uh, maybe uh, I have to be in, uh, in terms of already been five years with this project. And uh, there's probably another three to go before we have uh, a confirmation that we've been successful. So uh, and I think that that's probably typical of um, projects, major projects in the water industry. Uh, they have a a long lead time between recognition of a problem and uh, the actual um, confirmation that you've fixed that problem uh, a number of years later. But that's one of the intriguing parts of the water industry as well. I'd just like to add to uh, Phil's uh, acknowledgement of country. Um, where we're going today on site is the, uh, the land um, middle of where the custodians are the Narangeri people. Um, through this project, we've actually uh, done a, uh, put a lot of effort in, into involving the Narangeri. Um, we've got Narangeri people working on site in various roles and we're uh, trying to develop their skills. Uh, John Holland have been particularly um, strong in that side and we've encouraged some of our um, subcontractors to also uh, engage Narangeri people. We're also doing a, a special interpretive centre if you like, um, it's a, a landscaping around the pumping station that we'll probably drive past uh, later this morning. Um, there's not much there at the moment, um, we're doing the landscaping and we're also doing some pretty uh, innovative cladding on the pumping station. Pumping stations by itself is going to look like a big lump of concrete um, and uh, we've had a Narangeri uh, or a, a Narangeri Ghana person uh, design uh, some cladding on it which is in keeping with the Narangeri um, tradition and some of their wood carving. So not much to say today when we're out there on that but uh, hopefully uh, a year's time when you go out there you'll see what uh, the, uh, the fruits of our endeavours there. Okay, here, about the uh, actual project. What I want to cover this morning is uh, the early history, if you like, of the Murray Bridge Wastewater Treatment Plant. Uh, the need for a new uh, treatment plant to be uh, located off-site. Initial uh, traditional delivery that we uh, approached that we took. Uh, and then we, um, due to the uh, intervention of uh, our then new CEO, uh, Rock, uh, he, uh, Rock Chiro, uh, we went into a market-driven approach, uh, which changed our selection of the treatment method, actually. Uh, so the selection of the treatment method and the contractor were all combined together, uh, which I'll talk about in a minute. Now, and then I'll give a, an outline of the new infrastructure and a bit about the project timing. Um, here's the, uh, for those who don't know what the existing plant looks like, um, it was commissioned in 1970. Uh, at the intake, it's just a, uh, a macerator and four emulf tanks. There's no, uh, no screening uh, at all uh, and no odour management. Uh, it goes from those emulf tanks uh, through a trickling, well it did, the trickling biofilter, uh, which was uh, due to the problems we had in 2006, uh, was bypassed in 2007. Uh, the humus tank, uh, you see here, is uh, also uh, bypassed in 2007, and then it goes from there into the polishing goons, which uh, were fully aerated in 2007 as an alternative of having the biofilter and the uh, humus tank. There's, uh, so now uh, we've added a, another aerator a couple of years ago, 2015, <coughs> I think, uh, and uh, so there's six in the lagoon one and one 
aerator in Lagoon 2. Before it goes to this bottom right hand corner here, where we've got a, um, originally it was the chlorination contact tank, tank before it was just, just discharged straight into the River Murray, which uh, obviously today we, we don't uh, uh, think is a really good idea. So uh, in 1992, uh, a effluent pipeline was built from that same point. They used a chlorination tank as the sump and then we uh, put a pipeline under the Murray actually onto Long Island which you can see in the top right hand corner there and uh, then off about five kilometres to the east onto the uh, army uh, training area where we um, actually formed some wetlands and uh, those wetlands have now become a nationally listed wetlands with some uh, um, particular species of, actually they're just over there, there's little fish in there and that's the, the purple spotted gudgeon. Uh, so that's uh, a protected and, uh, uh, species that was endangered. So um, that's the, the current site. Uh, why did we uh, have a need for a new treatment plant? Well, we had odour pro problems. Basically, in 2006, we, uh, we lost control of the whole plant, uh, particularly the lagoons, and uh, there was a bit of big stink, um, which uh, made uh, the locals not particularly happy, and the EPA uh, also came in and, and suggested we, we might have to do something about the, uh, the location of the plant. So, um, we had... Uh, several uh, close neighbours that had more than 50 odour units uh, at their site. The EPA say two odour units is tolerable. So we were way, way over. And we had uh, 750 residents that were over that two odour units. So you can see it was uh, a pretty significant problem. It was a bit like the airports in that we were there first and the, a lot of the neighbours came and uh, built their houses close by us and then started complaining about the smell. Um, but nevertheless, uh, we uh, were seen to be responsible for the, the nuisance and uh, had to do something about it. We also had a situation where the plant is overloaded. Uh, we were uh, up to about 2.9 megalitres a day inflow versus the design capacity of 2.1 megalitres a day. Uh, this exacerbated the, the odour problem the basic uh, process was not good from an odour controlled point of view, but when we overloaded it, we even had a, a bigger problem with, with odour. <coughs> so um, with the expectation that the population is going to grow at about 2% per annum, Murray Bridges had a few knocks around because the, um, the abattoir was burnt down, but uh, supposedly that's going to be re rebuilt bigger than before. So. Um, it might get back on track to that 2% per annum. And so we, <coughs> we saw the problem only getting worse. Also with the age uh, and some corrosion issues associated with the sewage, uh, we had deterioration of the concrete structures. So we, we had to do some temporary works to make sure the thing, the, the EMOF tank central chambers didn't fall, uh, collapse into the, the, the total tank. Uh, if there was, especially for the earthquake, so we did some reinforcing just to get us through until we moved away from the site. Uh, also, the EPA aren't particularly happy with us being on the floodplain, uh, and the whole of these lagoons would be inundated in a 1 in 70 year flood. So, uh, all in all, the EPA said, I think we, SA Water would be nice if you left the site uh, by 2021, the end, the end of 2021. So we then started to look at ways of doing that. First of all, there was site selection. Uh, Oricon helped us there. Uh, we did a, uh, quite an extensive uh, review of where we could locate the, the new plant. We looked north, we looked east, we looked south. Uh, we did uh, MCAs on broad areas and then when we selected the southern area, due to the fact that A, it was on we didn't have to pump sewage across the river. Uh, secondly, it was close to uh, some better farmland than out to the, the east. Uh, and uh, also even it could be a long-term solution to Mount 
Barker's uh, disposal problems. So uh, we ended up in that southern region of the, of the city and then uh, we looked at about 11 sites and did more MCA work, more um, bit of odour modelling and we came up with the site here at Brinkley, which is about uh, nine, ten kilometres away from the existing uh, sewage treatment plant, wastewater treatment plant. So the next stage was once we we picked on the site, uh, we had uh, GHD help us do a lot of evaluation of alternative treatment methods. Um, we looked at uh, I don't know about ten different processes and through an MCA type approach evaluation we came up with uh, a recommendation that we used the covered anaerobic lagoons uh, and then um, at the new site at, at Brinkley. <coughs> this, um, we were all ready to go in what you might call a traditional approach which is uh, we, we come up with uh, options we decide on the best option and then we do a concept design. And once we've got the concept design, we put it out to tender for a DNC. Um, that's when Rock stepped in and said, no, 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 we're not doing that, Chaz. And I said, oh, but boss, we've, we've done it really well up to now. We, we're really proud of the approach we've taken. And he said, no, nah, we're doing it a different way. And that is we're going out to the market. All the ideas you've got up to now are basically we're going to push aside. You can use them as a baseline option if you want uh, for people to understand it. But basically you're going out to the market worldwide and see what technology is out there uh, and what ideas there are to solve our problem. So we did that. Uh, we, we, as I said, we would have done all those steps, but we went to the market-driven approach, which is basically a performance-based contract. We basically just said, SA Water wants you, the, the contractor, to design and build uh, a facility that will take the sewage away from the existing site, because that's where all Murray Bridge sewage ends up, or the sewage ends up. Um, we're going to pick it up there. This is what it looks like in terms of uh, characteristics, and this is what, how much volume we think we've got. Pick it up from there. Take it somewhere, we don't care. We've got a site that could be uh, a good one for you at Brinkley, but it's up to you. Treat it in whatever way you want, but as long as you meet our specifications and what the effluent's going to be looking like, and you deliver that back out to the Army wetland because we've got, uh, we've got those spotted gudgeon waiting to be uh, fed with some effluent. Also, the Army use that effluent for irrigating some of their lawns, uh, which uh, is important to them. And also there's another irrigator that's got a long-term contract that takes water and um, of the effluent and grows loosen. So um, we, <coughs> they want all the water they can get. So we, we still need to go out to that site with the effluent. <coughs> now, we're going to trust you that you will design and build something that's going to work, but we're also going to get you to operate it for two years. And within that two years, there'll be a one year period where you're going to have to um, uh, do a performance proving. You have to prove that you're achieving the effluent quality that uh, SA Water have spec uh, specified. And also, they're going to, uh, you're going to have to prove that you can operate the plant and the pumping stations at close to the uh, the OPEX cost that you've uh, put into your tender. Because the evaluation of the tender not only was looking at the capital side, it was in terms of financials, capital side also is looking at 30 years of operation. And we didn't uh, want someone to come up with a, a solution that was really cheap, but have huge operating costs over the, the 30 years. So we said, right, we look at the TOTEX, net present value of your total costs, uh, and that's what we're going to hold you to. So there's the capital cost where you're holding uh, the contractor to now, but also there's the operating cost. So in the performance proving period, they'll have to prove that they're within 15% of the what they tendered. 
If they don't, we've got a penalty, which is they have to pay 30 years worth of that excess, which is a pretty big uh, penalty. <coughs> we gave them the baseline option, um, which was the one developed by GHD and w in line with SA Water people. Uh, we opened it up, the global competition, via expression of interest, which uh, ended up with <coughs> three shortlisted tenderers for the selected RFT. Uh, they had to uh, then develop the concept designs. Each, each of those three had to develop a concept design for solving our problem. Initially, the, a lot of the, the contractors didn't like the approach because it meant that they had to spend $300,000, dollars on preparing their tender. Rock, in the past, SA Waters offered and paid something towards that, that, that sort of concept development, but Rock said, no, no, in the, in the big bad world out there, uh, if you want a tender for a, a project of this size, then you, you pay for the concept design. So uh, there was a lot of uh, angst, I think, in the industry that we'd taken this approach, uh, but they did it and we got three, uh, three tenderers offering four treatment methods. How do we do that? Well, John Holland actually and KBR came up with uh, two options which they couldn't select between them themselves. They said, both of them are good. They say, water, you make up your mind which one you want. And we had three different conveyance routes to get out to the, the Brinkley site. They all selected Brinkley because I really didn't have much time uh, to find a different place and also they, uh, that they recognised it was a, a good site. So we selected the, the contractors uh, and the treatment method all in one. We didn't say what sort of treatment method do we want, we said what sort of contractor do we want and, what sort, and within that there's uh, their treatment method. So we did a, um, uh, an analysis of all the tenders based on weighted criteria. Financial, as I've talked about, non-financial aspects of the treatment method and the conveyance systems, and that included environment, social impacts, and the like, uh, future flexibility, uh, capabilities, team member experience, uh, company experience, delivery uh, methodology in terms of how they're gonna deliver this project, local participation, uh, part of SA Water requirements through the government is that uh, we wait at least 15% to local participation in the project. Uh, and we looked at risk as well. Out of that, we ended up with uh, uh, John Holland as the leading contractor with their subcontractors KBR for design, Sewers for the technology, uh, which is the MBBR process. Uh, and of course, there's a, um, a number of other subcontractors that are now involved. Right, the, what do we end up with? Well, what are we going to end up with? Um, we're gonna have a, a new treatment plant at Brickley, which is this MBBR, which is a moving bed biofilm reactor, which Tim will talk, talk about in a minute. Uh, wastewater pumping station uh, at the existing wastewater treatment plant, which we call pumping station 34. So if you're PS 34, uh, you know that that's at the existing. As I said, all of the uh, Murray Bridge Township gravitates to that, well, doesn't grab, it gets pumped to that site. So uh, that's the collection point. So we pump from there, and then we have a booster pumping station uh, at pumping station 33 there, you can see, which is near the Swanport uh, Village Road. Uh, we have pipelines that now mostly go through the uh, farmlands rather than the roads. Our original concept with GHD was we were going down the main roads. I think Celine here is probably happy that we ended up going through the farmlands. Uh, while we've had a few ish, interesting discussions with the farmers, we all probably would have had a lot more uh, discussions if we went down uh, the main road there. And uh, we've also got uh, emergency overflow management areas at both Brinkley and uh, pumping station 34, uh, which is in the unlikely event that someone comes along, a contractor uh, in the future, to, um, and ex as an excavator and goes through our pipe and we can't pump out to the, from pumping station 34 to the Brinkley site, we have to have some emergency um, storage uh, areas at uh, 
at the pumping at the existing site. So that's what we've got uh, coming up. Um, you, you'll be able to go out to see the Brinkley site later this morning, and we'll probably drive by the pumping station 33, which is where we're going to have this uh, Naranjeri um, themed landscaping and cladding. Timing. Um, Mid-2014, uh, we started this project. It actually had a first start in about 2010, uh, but uh, along with Mount Barker, but that fell over uh, for various reasons and it was re restarted in 2014. In August uh, 16, we Rock came on board and rocked the boat and we ended up changing our uh, approach so that uh, out in December 16, we went out for ex expressions of interest. February 2017, we had the three tenderers, um, short, uh, tenderers it should be, shortlisted, and uh, we released an uh, SRFT in June of 2017. That closed in uh, August of 2017, and we got cabinet approval to appoint John Holland uh, in December. 2017. Design commenced in February after we did a, a finally uh, set the contract uh, and got that signed and in October of last year uh, construction commenced at the Brinkley site with a, a bit of uh, bulk earthworks. In the blue we've got uh, what we are planning to do and to, in uh, the end of this year we expect commissioning to commence with seeding of the MBBR being around about Christmas time. April next year, we expect uh, practical completion uh, and it then flicks over to this two year O&M operations and maintenance contract uh, with John Holland. And uh, at the end of the two years in April 22, it will be a handover to the SA Waters uh, operations team. So uh, as I said before, it's a long eight years uh, and you have to be patient. So uh, hopefully I can, uh, I'll be there and, uh, with a smile on my face in uh, April 22. Thank you very much.